Okay, how am I using this 150 ohm XLR dummy plug to test preamps? So you either saw me build one of these, if not, you can check out that video, or you just clicked on the video to see how I'm testing my preamps. So I'm gonna show you on several different preamps inside several different devices that I have, but important to know that I'm not an engineer and this is a very practical use of this. So how I test preamps either for devices that I'm reviewing or for something I bought, because if a preamp is no good, I'm really done with that device. I don't need to go past that point. I want clean audio from the gear that I'm using. And then of course, everything is subjective. The amount of noise that I can hear versus what someone else can hear, the amount of noise that is acceptable for my own productions. I'm gonna show you what that is for me. And again, how this device helps me understand the noise level that is coming from the gear versus say the ambience of the recording space I'm in. And this is a 150 ohm resistor inside of this XLR plug, and it's gonna mimic a typical standard dynamic microphone, which needs a lot of gain like the SM7B here. So if there's noise in the preamp, it's typically going to come out in that recording. I got this device from Julian Krauss in his YouTube channel. So I highly recommend you go over there and subscribe to him for much more in-depth tutorials over specifications, measurement, all of that stuff as it relates to audio. So let's plug this into a few different preamps and measure the noise floor. Okay, I'll start with the Evo 4 from Audient. First, we'll take a look and a listen to the preamp on channel one with nothing attached and the gain set to full. So this is not how you'd wanna test a preamp because with nothing attached, in other words, having no microphone plugged in, you aren't getting the proper resistance and therefore you're not getting a proper reading of the preamp. It'll produce much more noise than if you have a microphone plugged in. So let's plug in the 150 ohm resistor dummy plug to mimic a 150 ohm microphone like the SM7B that you are hearing me use and have seen me use in this video. We can see as soon as this is plugged in, the noise floor is reduced again because now we have resistance applied to the preamp and so we can measure this and we're getting a reading of about minus 83 dB average RMS. The number seems really good. In fact, in this case, it actually is. However, that RMS reading on its own doesn't tell us enough. We also need to know what the max gain is that the Evo 4 provides. They don't necessarily publish this spec, but let's say it's about 50 dB. I think it's actually a little less. So if we use about 50 dB of gain, I wanna see an average RMS level that measures somewhere less than minus 75 dB. Generally, this will be a preamp without much noise added to your recording. And so any noise you end up hearing, it's most likely from your mic and or the environment that you're recording in. And that's good to know so that you then know what you need to do to improve your recordings. You need to clean up the noise in your environment. The other really important tool here is your ears. So when you're doing these tests, you wanna have some headphones, you wanna set your output to a normal listening level and listen to the noise produced by your preamp, regardless of what it's measuring, take a listen. If you have a good preamp like the one that's in this Evo, you're not likely to hear any noise and that's exactly what we're hoping for when we're measuring just the preamp. But if you do hear noise, you now have a better idea of what the noise sounds like when you're mixing your tracks. And therefore, you can distinguish between environmental noise and preamp noise, and then decide how much cleanup that you might have to do. Now let's work with the Scarlett 4i4, which also produces about 50 dB of max gain. The noise floor in this case, when the preamp is turned up all the way, and we have the dummy plug inserted, measures around minus 78 dB average RMS. Again, this falls into a good range, quieter than minus 75 dB. And we know again, how much gain we have applied to the preamp. However, a more practical use of this device is to actually plug in your own dynamic microphone and set the level so that it's applying the same amount of gain that you'd use to record with. So in my case, using the SM7B with the 4i4, I need about 75 to 80% of its available gain to get my meters in the minus 18 to minus 
12 range, which is where I want to be when I'm recording. Obviously, this is dependent on the level at which I speak and my distance from the microphone. Someone else may need to use 90% or most of the available gain in the 4i4. So when I turn my microphone on and I gain it to working level and I'm quiet, I want to see that meter bouncing around minus 60 dB, ideally even lower or quieter than that, because I know that's going to produce a relatively clean noise floor and probably something that I can clean up even when I have to bring that up to level later in post-production. When we measure this, we get an average RMS of about minus 66 dB, close to minus 67. This is much different than when we measured the preamp by itself. And since we know even at 100% of the gain on the 4i4 was measuring at about minus 78 dB, we can see that the minus 66 dB average RMS produced when the mic is open is being created by the noise in my environment. So this is a really nice way to tell the difference between the noise in my environment and the noise being created by the gear. Okay, now I wanna take a look at the Zoom F8, which is a different story and is one of the reasons why you need to make sure you know how much gain you have available. So in the case of the F8, you have a max gain of plus 75 dB. That's a lot of gain. And if we measure this at 100%, you'll see our average RMS goes up simply because we're measuring more gain. And in fact, in this case, about 25 dB more than the previous preamps. So if we only relied on that average RMS number, we would not know enough about the amount of noise we can expect from our recordings with the F8. And so that's again why I think the best method here and the one I'm using currently is to plug in the dynamic microphone that you want to use. And when we set the F8 to a level we need to record and achieve a good working level, in this case, that's about 60 to 65% of the available gain, which is around probably around 50 dB. And then we record the preamp with the dummy plug as we did before. And because we are now using a level of gain that is comparable to our other preamps, when we measure the noise floor of the preamp, we're getting minus 82 average RMS, which for me sits at a good level for what is acceptable for preamp noise. And finally, the infamous Zoom H4n, not the Pro, the first gen model, the original. So the nice thing here is we can see what a bad preamp would look and sound like. I'm setting the gain to 100%. With the H4n, I don't think it's any more than 50 dB of gain, probably much less. And because of this, it's also the amount of gain we'll need to use with the SM7B to get it up to a proper recording level. And so a sample measure with the dummy plug is giving us an average RMS of about minus 68 dB, which is much higher or louder than the previous preamps that provided the same or more gain and again, is part of the reason why I'm giving my arbitrary threshold of what is acceptable for my own recordings, that minus 75 dB RMS, because in this case, you should be able to hear the noise floor produced by the H4n, and you will definitely hear that in your recordings. All right, that's how I'm using this device. If you want to make your own, check out that video. Subscribe to Julian. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. And I'll see you next time.